All right, this is the end of this week's Torah reading called Naso. And really, if I had time, I don't know, maybe I'll try to do it tomorrow, maybe later. We could do the reading for Shavuot, the holiday of Shavuot. On Sunday is going to be the reading from Shavuot. And you people outside of Israel have two days. And what do they read? They read from Yitro. Right near the beginning over there in, in the book of Exodus about uh, the giving of the Torah. So we'll see. Maybe if I have time to do that tomorrow, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Travel. Okay. Okay, so we learned in this week's Torah portion a lot of very interesting things. It starts off that uh, Moses and Aaron, they count the last two of the three tribes of Levi, and they give them right their, their jobs they're supposed to carry. And there's the commandment of the Sota and the commandment of the Nazir. And there's the idea that if a person has, he wants to uh, repent, he has to confess to his sins to God, between him and God, and that impure people shouldn't be in the camp. And then it talks about the, uh, the offerings of the 12 tribes. Okay, what happened? There was seven days of what I call it inauguration, I don't know, pre preparation days from the temple. S seven days where they prepared the tabernacle. They prepared the tabernacle. This is like a little bit less than a year after the Jews got out of Egypt. A little bit less than a year. So there were seven days. On the first day of Nisan, which is like two weeks short of the first anniversary of leaving Egypt, the tabernacle opened up. Opened for business. First day. That was the day that Nadav and Avil rushed in and they tragically died. But that didn't stop the the functioning of the tabernacle. And that was the first day that the, the uh, heads of the tribes, they brought their offerings. 12 days, each tribe brought exactly the same thing. And strangely enough, the Torah repeats each and every offering of all of the tribes. It's the same thing 12 times, just to changes the name of the who brought it. Okay, so let's 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 do this briefly. 10, 15 minutes, okay. This is the end of this week's Torah, but th that's what this is what makes this week's Torah reading the longest of all of them. Because it has these offerings of each of the tribe repeated 12 times. So let's go. Let's let's see what I'm talking about. Here it goes. And it was Bayom Kalot Moshe when Moses finished the Hakim at the Mishkan, setting up the tabernacle of the Yimshachotan, and he anointed it, the Yakadishotan made it holy, at Kol Kelav and all the vessels. That was the seven days at the Mizbeach and the altar, at Kol Kelav and all the accoutrements, what is that, the, 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 the tools that are used in the altar. Bayim Shechem, and he anointed them and he made them holy also. Okay, let's just skip this. We'll go back. Let, I just, just so you get an overview of what's going on here. The leaders of the Jewish people, the heads of the Beit Avotam of each one of the 12 tribes. They are the heads of the tribes. They are the ones that Moses appointed and that important things there are always called for. These 12 tribes, they brought their sacrifice. Now, Levi did not bring one, but nevertheless, there were 12 tribes because Yosef, the tribe of Yosef, was divided into two. So together with Levi, there were really 13. But Levi wasn't like officially one of the tribes as far as this goes. They didn't have a part in Israel. Anyway, Vayavio with Korbanam, they brought their sacrifices in front of God. Sheish Eglot Sav. They brought it on six um, 
covered wagons, the Shneimas of Bakar, 12 oxes, Agalal Shtenasim, one wagon for two of the, there were six wagons, right, 12 tribes, so it was one wagon for two tribes, Bashur Lechad, and but each one of them had an ox to offer up. And they offered them up before the Mishkan. In other words, on the outer altar. God said to Moses, take these offerings from them. And it should be in order to serve in the service of the tent of meeting. There's the tabernacle. And give them to the Levites, each according to his service, each according to his building. Moses took the these um, uh, wagons, the bakar and the axes. And he gave them to the Levites. And two of these wagons and four of the axes he gave to Gershon. Now these axes are not going to be offered up. And the wagons also, why? Because these were given to these the, the, the tribes of the, the families of Levi to carry the things. They had a lot to carry. They didn't carry it on their shoulders. They carried it right, except for Kahat. Kahat did carry it on their shoulders. We'll see. At Arba Agalot, four of the wagons, two wagons were given to Gershon. Gershon was the one that carried the drapes. Arba, four of the six Agalot, and eight of the oxes, in other words, each one of the two, wagon, two oxes to pull the wagons. They were given to Morari because they had the heavy things to carry. They had to carry these, um, the boards. I don't know. Okay. okay. Believe the the family of Kahat, they didn't get any of those wagons. There were six wagons. Two of them were given to Gershom. They carried the curtains. Four of them were given to Morari because they carried the pillars and, 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 and the boards. It was hard. But Kahat didn't get anything. Why? Because they were holy things. All the things they had were holy. But Katef, you saw, and they carried everything on their shoulders. All the things that the Kahat carried, they had these poles, and they would carry them by these poles, two people, four people, something. Okay, now we're getting to the sacrifices. That was that was one thing. They gave these gifts to the Levites. Now we have the sacrifices. And now these leaders of the tribes, the 12 leaders of the tribes, they made offerings to the inauguration of the altar, the day that it was anointed, and they gave their sacrifices in front of the Mizbeach. They brought them. What did they bring? Here we go. Don't bring them all at one day. Every day a different head of the tribe should bring to the anointing of the altar. And what would they bring? The first day came Nachshon ben Amin Dov. Nachshon ben Amin Dov, he was the head of the tribe of Judah, Yehuda. What did he bring? Now we're going to see the same thing over and over again. Ready? But yeah, the Korbano, his sacrifice, Karat Kesev Echad, one plate of silver. Shloshim Umea Mishkalo. How much did it weigh? 130 units. Mizraka had one like sort of a bowl of silver that weighed 70 units. Shekel Kodesh, all of them, both the pan and the bowl, are filled with solid, fine flour, blue of a shaman that is soaked in oil for a meal offering. One spoonful, 
one spoon, I'm sorry, that's, uh, which is 10 units of gold. A spoon, the spoon is made of gold and it is filled with incense. One ox, one ram, one sheep, one-year-old sheep, for a total offering. Sirizim, a goat, for a sin offering. And what about a shlomim? Shlomim means it's eaten by the owners also. Bakr shenayim, two cows, two bull, whatever, oxes. Elim chamisha, five rams. Atudim chamisha, five female sheep. Kvasim b'nei shana chamisha, and one-year-old uh, sheep five. That's the sacrifice of Nachshon ben Enov. And this is going to re be repeated 12 times. Exactly what they brought. Same thing. All right, let's go back a little bit to the beginning. We're going to learn another about five minutes or so. Why did everybody bring this same thing? Why did everybody bring the same thing? Let's see what they are. Okay. Excuse me one minute. I want to find this. Okay. Let's do the 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 dots canium a little bit. Here. So they brought, what did, what did we say each one brought? He brought, here. So he brought a plate of silver, 130. Uh, uh, a bowl of silver, 70 shekels, and they're filled with solit, which is uh, soaked in oil. What's the sacrifice? What's the significance of this? Let me see. Let me try to find this. I'm sorry. Here we go. Uh -oh. It's explained on, on the second day. On the first day, it just says what it is, but on the second day, Nasan al Bensor shall Yasakar. Here we go. What did everybody offer? Rashi says, uh, okay, Karat Kesef, how do we start off? A plate of silver, the number of the letters here is the gematria, right? Count the, the, the numerical value of the letters. It is the, is the numerical value 930. This corresponds to what? The years of Adam. He lived 930 years, 70 years short of a thousand. How much did it weigh this plate of silver that we brought? One, everyone brought 130 units. Why 130? Because Adam, <clears throat> when he gave birth to children, he was 130 years old. Right, Cain, uh, they, they had children on the first day, but when the, the shame and this, when they were born, there was um, not shame. I'm, I'm sorry, um, was it Enosh? When he was 30, 130 years old, that's when he started. Adam Shloshim, but the Motok, etc. But that's when Adam gave birth to his <clears throat> the, the son after Cain came, killed Hevel. So that sort of doesn't count. It was 130 years old. Then he had one bull that was also of silver. That's the numerical value of 500, 520. 500, these words, Mizrach Echad Kesef, count the letters, 520. What's that mean? Noah. That corresponds to Noah. What's Noah got to do with 520? That he 
was he started having children when he was 500 years old. And Shem, one of his sons, Shem, Ham Biafis, Shem was 20 years old when the, the, the flood was decreed. That's him, Sean. No, no, I'm sorry. Is that right? Okay, good. It says, no, I'm sorry. I'll shame that the, the, the flood was decreed 20 years before he started to give birth to children, Noah. Like I explained by the Yimeyav Esrim Shana, when God said that, right, why, why is it that after the flood, God said people only live 120 years? He explained that's why. Therefore, Nehemiah says, Mizrach Echad Kesef. And it doesn't say Mizrak Kesef Echad, like I explained before, because that's the, that even the letters of Echad, they also add on to this, what's called 100, uh, 500 and, uh, um, and 20, we said before. 20. 70 shekel, how much did it weigh this bowl? This bowl was 70 shekel. This corresponds to the 70 nations that came out from the children of Noah. Kafachad, one spoon of gold. This corresponds to the Torah. That the Torah was given from God. Kafachad. Right? It was given from the hand of God. Kafachad. And it was 10 units of gold. That corresponds to the 10 commandments. And it was filled with incense. This is the gematria, the numerical value of the word ketoret. Ketoret. Gematria. Gematria, the word of Ketoret is Teriag Mitzvah. Ketoret is Tough Reish. Tough Reish. Teriag Mitzvot. The count. Is that true? Huh? Of Ketoret is Teriag 613 Mitzvot. Oh, oh but, but how do we get that? You have to change the letter Kuf with a letter Dalid, like Atbash, Gardak. There's a way of, of permeating the letters that you take the letters and take the, the, the first letter of the alphabet and, and exchange it with the last letter of the alphabet. Take it and exchange the last letter, the second letter of the alphabet, exchange that with the second to the last letter of the alphabet, of the olive base, and etc. And if you exchange it, then it comes out to be uh, Katorat is the Gematria 613. Okay. Parachad, what does it mean? One ox, one, one ox. This corresponds to Abraham, that it said Abraham took, the, uh, took an ox to give to the angels. Ayal Echad, this corresponds to Yitzchak. That Yitzchak, after God told Abraham not to sacrifice Yitzchak, so he took a, a ram. And Kevis Echad, this corresponds to Yaakov. Yaakov, like it says, a Kifri, remember Yaakov when he was by Lovin, he made this whole thing with the, the sheep, how he became rich for the sheep. A goat, one goat, one goat that refers to Yosef. Like it says, Ve'yishchatu Sirizim, it says the brothers of Yosef, they sold him into captivity and they took a goat and slaughtered it and dipped his uh, coat, the coat of many colors. They dipped it into the, uh, the blood and they came to their father and said, oh, well, we found this coat, maybe a wild animal. Ate it. Another thing that all the, each and every one of the heads of the tribes they brought, a, a, a shlomim offering, a peace offering, two cows, five rams, five female rams, older ones, and five, uh, five female sheep, and, um, uh, and one-year-old sheep, five years old. What is this? This corresponds to two cows. That corresponds to Moses and Aaron. That Moses and Aaron, and all these things that they brought is a metaphor 
or for something else. So this corresponds to Moses and Aaron, right? Corresponds to the years of the life of Adam, the number of children, and, and, and uh, when he started giving birth to children, and Noah, and etc. All these are hints at the history of the Jewish people. They had to bring two cows. That corresponds to Moses and Aaron, that both of them, that's why it's called Shlomim, Shlomim, they're peace offerings because Aaron and Moses, they brought peace between the Jews and God. These, they were the two oxes that brought peace. The rams and sheep, etc. This is these three types. This corresponds to the Kohanim, the Levim, and the Israelim, and also Torah, Nevim, and Ketuvim. That's the five times, five sheep, five this. That corresponds to the five books of the five books of the Torah and the five uh, commandments that are written on one tablet and five are written on the other tablet. This is what it says, Moshe Darshan. This is how we explain the metaphor for each and every one of these offerings that the uh, each one of the tribes brought. And we repeat the same thing 12 times. You have this week's Torah portion in a nutshell. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, God willing, I hope that in the course of the day, I will do the rest of the Dvar Malchut about the new Torah. It's going to come with Shammai and Hillel and the, uh, and the cities of refuge and etc. Very interesting. God willing, I hope I'll have time and I'll do it. Look forward to um, learning tomorrow. I hope I'll, I'll give a class tomorrow morning also. I'll be by my son's house in Miron, but I'll bring my computer up there and I'll give a class. Shalom, Uvracha, have a good day with Mashiach now. And receiving the Torah, Basimcha B'Pinimus. Now, by the way, in any case, Sunday is a holiday. So Sunday, I will not give any classes. Monday, I will give classes, but any of you that happen to be Jewish, please don't look at them because you're not supposed to be looking at uh, this. On, uh, by you, outside of Israel, it's two days. The holiday is two days. By us, it's only one day. In any case, Sunday, there will definitely not be any classes. Monday, there definitely will, God, with God's help, be classes. And I hope that tomorrow, Friday, would also be a class. Have a good day. God bless you. Mashiach now. And receive the Torah with Simcha and Paninius.